Okay, this is Dan Stewart from Bud's Jaguar Land Rover in Oakville, Ontario. Today we are doing a feature tutorial on a 2023 full-size Range Rover standard wheelbase P530SE. This is a Fuji White with a Perlino interior unit. It's got the optional 23 inch black wheels and uh, it's also got the uh, shadow exterior package which you can see with the side vent there. Um, I'm just gonna go through some of the features here um, so that in terms of navigating the controls, it's a little bit easier for some people to um, be able to use the vehicle. So first off, the keyless entry, a lot of people will know this, but when you have your key in the pocket, you can just press the button on the door handle and it will uh, unlock automatically. All of the doors have this, but right now it's set up that just the driver's door will unlock, but that can be changed in the settings and I will show you how to do that. So I'm just gonna hop in the vehicle and fire it up. So I'm just gonna put my foot on the brake pedal and the start button is just down here. So I'm just gonna start from the left side um, and you'll see the uh, controls for the seat are over here. So. If I press this forward, that's going to move the front of the seat and right over on the touch screen, you'll see immediately you can adjust the seat. Now, I'm just noticing this is already set up for a feature that I don't like, which is called the uh, uh, haptic feedback. So I'm just going to quickly go into settings here and I'm going to turn off haptic feedback because now it will be a normal touch screen. So going back over to the door here, so when I press this, forward, backward, wherever, doesn't matter. This will pop up here and it gives you more control for what you can adjust on the seat. Shoulders, bolsters, lumbar, you name it. And then basically you select what you're doing there as the adjustment. So you can kind of do basic controls on the door and then if you're getting a little bit more, uh, you know, fine tuning of every little uh, detail about the seat you'll do it from the touch screen there so you can do your backrest forward backward you can raise the height of the seat lower it right um, then the steering column adjustment is just on the right side and this knob here you will move forward backward up down and you'll want to make sure it's turned into the auto position and when it is um, which you just have to have it turned so that it's facing that. If you turn it forward, then it's just a manual adjustment. But over here in auto, it's going to automatically adjust moving back the steering wheel so it's a little bit easier to get in and out of the vehicle. Um, and it will do it automatically when you finish your journey. You put the car in park and shut it off and open up the door. So once you do the seat and the steering wheel, the next is the exterior mirror. So just basically you'll select driver's side mirror, Use the joystick in there, left, right, up, down. Same with the passenger side there. This button here will uh, fold in the mirrors. So you can see that's happening there. And then if I press it again, folds it right out. So that's what that does, folding of the mirrors. This is to do with the air ride suspension. And Range Rovers have had this for a very long time, but it uh, kind of overlaps with the touchscreen uh, adjustable air ride suspension control. But if you press this, what happens is it just lowers down the vehicle into the access mode, so it's two inches lower than its normal ride height. Um, that's all it does. Uh, it doesn't go up or down or anything else. That's really what it is. When I press this here, that's your child door lock system, so that will disengage the use of the doors from the inside, and then it will uh, also in, uh, it disengage the use of the power windows from the back uh, as well. So that's just the child door lock system. If I press that, it will turn it off again. The next thing you'll want to do is um, program your memory position seating. So if I press M and then one read afterwards, you'll see it says memory one setting save there. And then of course you have two and three for other drivers there as well. Um, moving over to the steering wheel, I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit here. So this uh, little button here, if I press this, you'll see on the dash there, you can customize how this information display is uh, labeled. So basically you have uh, the left panel, which you can con control through. So I'm just pressing the arrow down button and I'm scrolling through whatever I want there. So I'll leave it as navigation. I'll just press the circle button to select it. But if I go back into this menu here, I'm just gonna go to display layout. 
you can change it to a dial mode, which is a little bit more traditional. So you'll see now it changes to that. Um, so you can just kind of change whatever you want there. And then if you go down here, HUD settings is for the head up display, which you can kind of see there, it says zero kilometers an hour and we're in park. So if I go down, you can change the brightness. If I go into that menu, you can go up and down, select whatever you want. And then same with the position there, you can raise and lower it depending on whatever you prefer. Um, I'm gonna go back down here to HUD content. So you can select whatever you want there to be displayed on the head up display. Um, so you, anytime you have a check mark there, that means it's going to be displayed, of course. So if I go back here, go under vehicle settings, um, tire pressure, TPMS load settings. So if you're towing something, you can change the sensor settings. Uh, uh, auto apply 4x4 info, so that's for off-roading information. And then show warning. So if you press that, if you have a check engine light on your dash or some sort of message, then you press show warning, it will show detail on that and why it's on. So I'm just gonna press left to uh, exit the menu there. Now we're back to the default setting, which is just showing for the audio. Um, this is for your voice command, which you can use for phone and navigation. Uh, if you have your phone um, hooked up, there's wireless CarPlay or Android Auto. If your phone is set up uh, and you have CarPlay or Android Auto engaged, you can press and hold this button for three seconds and you can do any sort of Siri or OK Google command um, through your phone. Scan and tune for the audio system and favorites for um, AM FM. Pick up and hang up your phone calls and then this button you can customize to do whatever you want. So if I press this diamond button, you'll see over on the touch screen here in a brief moment, I'm actually just gonna change the uh, display settings here, but well, I'll do that in a second. So that diamond button, you'll see here, short press and long press. So um, we can select whatever we want here. So you can set up an Alexa account. You can do a very particular app launch. So if I go in here, cabin lighting, cameras, climate, you know, eco data, whatever you want there, you can really select what you want that button to do. And then if I go back here, I'll press and hold of the diamond button will do a second feature of your own choice as well. So you can program whatever you want from there too. Now, um, just because I'm me, I like the background of the screen being dark, not light. So I'm gonna change that. If I press the settings button down here, uh, it brings us back to the menu that we were in last. So I'm gonna go down here to quick and I'm gonna go auto theme, change it to dark theme. So now it's just a black background and because it's getting stuffy in here, I'm gonna turn on the climate. So I'll show you that real quick. You'll see here, it says push for seat and pull for the fan. So I'm going to pull for the fan and I'm gonna turn it to the right. And now the air is on, I'm gonna push it and that will bring us back to the normal air climate. And then you can just adjust here wherever you want, left and right to change and adjust accordingly. And you'll see for the seat, you can push it and it's just a really quick way to be able to turn on your cooled seats or your heated seats if you turn it to the right. Press it again, goes back to your normal air climate. Um, so I'm just gonna close this menu here. I'm gonna go back over to the steering wheel. So the, the, we've done this side of the steering wheel with the exception of this is obviously your volume up and down, which now we have the audio system on. So I'm just gonna turn that off right here. The right side of the steering wheel, you have your cruise control, which is adaptive because you can see these two, two different arrows. So to set it, you'll press this button right here. To accelerate, you'll press up. To decelerate, you'll press down. In order to close the gap between you and the vehicle in front of you, you'll tap this. To lengthen it, you'll press this. CAN is for cancelling the cruise control, and this will turn on and off your lane keep assist. So when the lines are green, that means it's activated. And the way that you can tell whether it's fully activated or not is this right here where it shows that little lane. So it's gray right now, which means it has not successfully found the lane yet. Once you've been driving 50 kilometers an hour or faster uh, for a short period of time, I believe it's about 20 seconds, then and it senses the lane that you're in, those will turn green and the lane keep assist is fully activated. And so it can lightly turn the steering wheel to keep you inside of a lane. Um, so you, you just really quick way of turning that on and off. So if you just press that, now it's back off, but um, that's the way to tell whether it's actually functioning or not. 
Um, heated steering wheel is right here. And then this is a speed limiter function. So if you press this, you can program a speed on the dash here once the car is in motion and uh, the vehicle will not exceed that particular speed. So if I press this again, it will go back to the adaptive cruise control function. So this will toggle between the two. Um, so speed limiter or adaptive cruise control. So I've just left it as the adaptive cruise control setting. Um, the wipers work the same as pretty much every other Land Rover that we sell, but tap it down once, we'll just do one wiper of the front windshield. The automatic rain sensing wipers will be up one, and then you can change the sensitivity right here, minimum, maximum. One more up is a constant low, the very highest is a constant high. So I will bring it down three times and now we're in the off position. The rear wipers, intermittent and on. To spray the front, you'll pull it towards you. To spray the rear, you'll press this button at the end. Moving over to the touchscreen here. Navigation, super easy to use. When I tap on this, I will press search. I'm gonna type in my destination, one, two, three, John Street. And I will just press okay, and it's going to search. So I like this one. And then if I press the star, that will add it to my favorite list. So now I'm just gonna press start and it gives me all the turn by turn directions once I start rolling. I'm just gonna press this little menu button here and I'm gonna press end to cancel that. And you'll see my recent destinations, but also since I press the star, it's on my saved list. You can also program your home and work locations there if you wish as well. Um, so you'll see that is on there now. If I shuffle away this menu, you can do like a little pinch and zoom, just like so. Um, but very straightforward with regards to the navigation, that's how that works. Phone, uh, since I'm recording this with my phone, I can't show you that, but if I tap on this, all you do is go into your settings on your phone and you'll see something that starts with the word PIVI. You tap on that and then on the screen you press yes. And then on your phone, you press accept and it will sync up automatically. If you have an iPhone on the left side over here, you'll see the CarPlay symbol. You can press that and it will apply all of your apps that are compatible on the touchscreen. To toggle back to this screen, you'll see this button or a little home button. So if I go into this here, you'll see I can close this here. But if I go into media, for example, home will bring me back here and then you'll have a little CarPlay symbol right here or Android Auto as well, uh, which is compatible too. Uh, so I'm just going to go quickly into the audio here. So to scan and seek, you'll just use the arrows here accordingly. To set a uh, preset, just tap the star and, the and it will add it to your favorite list here. People. I'm just going to turn this down. It will add it to your favorite list here, just like so. If I go back into player, I'll just press that star again. It removes it. Stations, this will pull up all the strongest radio frequencies depending on the area they are in. So it will pull up anything that's available. Top left here will be all your different audio inputs, um, Bluetooth, audio streaming, satellite radio, AM, FM, and then there's these audio apps here as well. And then if your phone is connected, you can do Apple CarPlay or Android Auto once it's connected there too. I'm gonna go back to the home menu here. That's just a quick run through of the touchscreen, but it is very straightforward, especially once you get used to it. Um, over here is for your camera, which this car is equipped with the uh, full 3D surround view camera, which you can see the bird's eye view on this side. And then if I press these arrows, it will allow me to see all around the vehicle, which it's kind of uh, a little bit interesting right now because I'm inside a delivery pod where um, there's walls very close around it. So that's why it's kind of appearing a little funny, but it'll allow you to see all around the vehicle. So in certain parking situations, this is very handy. Press the home, that'll bring us back to the main menu here. Now, if I press settings here, I'm just gonna go back and then down here quick, you'll see screen off, the screen theme, which we already did and the haptic feedback. If I turn that back on, you'll see it's it's like you have to click the screen um, versus a normal touch screen when I have that off. And then you can change the brightness here too. You can edit the entire screen layout for the home layout, just press edit layout and you can change the widgets accordingly. Audio, bass, treble, and subwoofer is your adjustment there. If I go into all the most important things, I'll just run through quick because obviously I can make this video very long 
and uh, go through every single thing, but I don't think it's really necessary. So I'll press vehicle and I will go into exterior lights as an example. You can press 30 seconds and change the threshold for the amount of time that the lights, uh, exterior headlights will stay on uh, after you shut off the car when you've completed a journey. If I go back here, auto high beam assist. When you're driving up north, uh, there's a very low amount of street lights. It will automatically turn on your high beams. Then when it senses an oncoming light source, it will automatically deactivate and then reactivate as it deems necessary. Uh, convenience, vehicle access, automatic access height. So that means that when you complete your journey, you put the car in park, uh, you open up the driver's door, it will automatically lower the vehicle by two inches just to make it easier to get in and out of the vehicle. Once you put the car in drive and you drive away, uh, it will automatically raise you back up to the standard ride height. Um, those are just a few quick things. There's obviously a lot more detail that I can go through in there. Um, going back down here. So I already showed you how to use these controls, but if you did want to do more seat adjustments, you can press the seat. This particular car is equipped with the massage, which you can turn on and off just right here. You can change all different types of intensity and massages. So that can be all fiddled around with and then of course sorry going back into that menu um, I'm going to go back into massage I'm just going to turn this off and then adjust which is the same thing as if you press the controls on the door there and more so this will just give you uh, the ability to fold and unfold the second row seats that's on this vehicle I'll press home to bring us back to the main screen with regards to the climate adjustment, if I press this, you can select and deselect whichever vents you want to use. Um, this is a heated windshield, which will heat up a, a heating element that's built into the windshield. So when I press that, it gets rid of all the snow and ice on the windshield there. It usually takes about four to five minutes, but you'll see it loosens up all the snow and ice. It's pretty amazing in the winter time. Um, your driving modes, if I press this down, this will pop up on the screen here. So we've got all your different driving modes. This is dynamic, which will uh, change the way that the vehicle shifts. It's quicker gear shifting, a um, little bit more throttle response, tighter suspension, gives you more sporty feel and drive. Eco will maximize fuel efficiency up to 5%. Comfort will give you the most refined ride. Grass, gravel, snow is good for snow covered roads and it will prompt this uh, low traction launch, which is really just a low speed cruise control. Most people won't really be using that, so I'll turn that off. If I turn it over to the, again, to, to the right again, this is your uh, sand mode, which will be good for when you're driving through the desert, and rock, and then waiting, which is if you're driving through water. Uh, the waiting will change the suspension and raise the vehicle up completely, which is happening right now. I'm just going to bring it back over to uh, the normal comfort mode, which is leveling me back out now. Um, I'll press this down and it will put me in the auto mode, which means that it will automatically select the appropriate driving program depending on road conditions and how you're driving the vehicle. One thing I want to point out about the gear shifter here. There's a little switch that's on the front here. When the car is in uh, is on, you can press and hold this button, move it back. Now I'm in drive. I'm just gonna turn off my sensors there. If I just so much as very lightly tap it backwards, you'll see this S light up, that's sport mode. That will give you a lot more throttle response and it will uh, delay your gear shifting. So the car drives very different when you are in the sport mode. You'll notice a huge difference with your throttle response. If I tap it backwards lightly again, now I'm back in drive. That'll give you a much more comfortable uh, normal drive. If I slide this back here, your cup holders are here. There is a little bit of extra storage space, USB and USB-C chargers that are down there. So that's just kind of a little bit of a hidden trick there too. If I open this up here, uh, we just have your normal um, armrest glove box, but uh, sometimes they are equipped with a center console cooler box. Uh, trying to think of what else to show. There is two glove boxes, the upper one right here controlled, and then the lower one, you just press this and it will open up and then you can just manually close it. This car is also equipped with the clear sight rear view mirror, which is 
probably one of my favorite features. When I click this backwards, it's now activating a camera that's mounted on the roof and it gives you 30 degree wider visibility in full HD. You can program your garage door openers right here and then you can adjust a couple of adjustments with these buttons. When I press this, you'll see two different options. Brightness, which you can dim or brighten. If I press this, this is the tilt. So you can raise or lower the camera depending on whatever you wanna see. This was just a quick walkthrough of the vehicle. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Take care.